Hi, I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images and welcome to an introduction to alcohol inks. So this is the first one in a series of videos that we're going to be doing featuring lots of different techniques with alcohol inks and what sort of things you can do with the things you create with it. It's a wonderful crazy world of colour and I hope you're going to have some fun with us. But before we get into the fun, let's deal with it a little bit of safety stuff first. For a start, alcohol inks are flammable, don't work by candlelight. Once they're dry, they're fine, but while you're working with them, do not have any naked flames, don't smoke, don't have any naked flames around, they are flammable. The other one is that um, they are an irritant. In particular, the blending solution or with the pinata inks that I'm working with, the Claro Extender, this is a product that you use to actually extend the drying time of the inks and to help you move the inks around more because alcohol inks, are d because of how the nature of them, they dry very quickly. So, off so we want to actually extend that drying time so that we can do more effects with them. But this stuff is has uh, resins or binders in it that are not good for you. So do not put this into a spray bottle. Just use it either with a dropper bottle or actually a dropper and just handle it with care. So flammable and an irritant, you don't want to breathe it in, you don't want to get in your eyes, that sort of thing. You also know I'm wearing gloves today, which I'm usually quite <laughs> hesitant to wear gloves. I, I don't mind getting messy and getting ink stained, but it's more that the alcohol itself that's in the inks and that we use in our cleanup solution or using isopropyl alcohol, it's very drying on your skin. So I'm going to be wearing gloves to protect my hands. Most of us would know from the times we're in that we're using hand sanitizers all the time, which is basically isopropyl alcohol, and you know how drying it can be on your skin. So just the gloves are a great way of just giving your skin that little bit of a break and not stressing it out with the alcohol. Um, the other thing is, just a bit of a tip, if you're wanting to <laughs> put a bit of hand lotion on your hands just before you put your gloves on and then you're giving yourself a bit of a spa treatment while you're having your fun and playing. Okay, so that's the careful things. Don't breathe too much of it in. The, um, the isopropyl alcohol or cleanup solution, that's not so bad. We can have that in a spray bottle. It's not going to do us any damage, it doesn't smell good and you do want to work in a well ventilated area. We want to have lots of fresh air as well, we don't want to be breathing in too much of the alcohol. But it's not going to do you too much harm, it's the extender that you don't want to be breathing in. Okay, so covering those basics, let's get in and actually talk a little bit about the inks. So there's different brands of alcohol inks, uh, the three main ones that I know of and have worked with, there's the Ranger, there's the Piñata that I'll be using today, there's the Couture Creations, um, there is a, uh, another brand, a Celtic brand that looks very interesting colours wise but not something that we can get in Australia at the moment. Anyway, so there's different brands, some of them work a little bit differently but mostly they're pretty similar. The Ranger ones have an incredible array of colours. The Piñata ones, a little bit smaller range of colours, but a little bit more intense colours. So people have preferences and some of them use a bit out of one range and a bit out of another range. You have your basic dye colours and these will come in stronger and softer hues. Then you have a range of metallics in the Piñata. They have brass, gold, copper and pearl. Uh, both Ranger and Piñata have a white. Uh, which is another quite a heavier opaque solution to work with, whereas the colours are all a dye, so they're ever so slightly translucent. Um, and then in the range of uh, ones, you also get pearls and the um, uh, some new metallics. Um, and <laughs> the name of them has escaped me. Oh, not oxides. Never mind. That's the inks. No, the Ranger has got their new metallics. Okay. <laughs> But today I'm working with the Piñata inks. I love the colours in these, I love the shine that I get from them. So that's what we're going to be having a bit of a play with. Okay, now the Piñata, the inks come in these little bottles. Some of mine I've actually put into, um, because I teach with them, I've bought larger bottles of them. So I've then packed them up myself into just a smaller bottle that I've labelled. But I also like to put a bit of the colour on the lid so I can tell at a glance in my box which colour I'm picking up. But also when I'm working and I've got the lids off and I go to put them back on, I know which lid goes with which colour so that I'm not contaminating the nozzle with another colour that then might uh, on my next piece of work, I might get a surprise that I get a bit of brown when I thought I was getting pink. So I'm, some people don't mind, but I'm fussy about wanting to put the same lids back on the same bottles. The other thing is they can build up quite a sticky residue when you 
um, been working with them so I like to give mine a bit of a wipe off with some clean up solution usually on either a cotton wool pad or onto a bit of paper towel give it a bit of a clean up before you put it away just so the lids don't stick on okay so that's our basic ink so we've got the basic colors and then we've got our metallics now our metallics as you'll see they do sink to the bottom of the bottle so these need to be given a good shake before you work with them you can also have them sitting on their side a bit before you work with them which just helps that to dissipate a bit they also get very sticky around the top so make sure you do give those a good clean when you finish working with them and you're putting them away okay now there's other things to think about is what you want to work on with your alcohol inks. They can cover so many different surfaces, but not basic cardstock. It needs to be something that's got a shine to it. Um, things like gloss card, which I sell in packs of gloss card. So this is a clay coated, a clay coated gloss card. It's not photo paper. Uh, you may find some photo papers that you can work on but generally the inks will dry too quick the same as when I'm doing my glossy scenes the inks dry too fast on the photo paper for you to be able to create good blended effects and the same with these we want something that the inks are going to move across the surface of the other in, um, material that a lot of people work with is the Yupo which is a plastic uh, and it comes in several forms it comes in a translucent um, and several different weights of opaque it's a really good surface to work on because the inks really float on it so that's excellent myself I'm a little bit I try not to use plastics any more than I can so I prefer to work on something that's a cardstock but if you like if you don't mind that then Yupo is a fantastic surface to work on another one is also the masterpiece board which is a coated board it has a slight I don't know if Matthew can get in close and have a bit of a look at that it has a bit of a texture to it um, so it actually gives your work a little bit of a pearlescent look the inks float on it and blend on it beautifully and with veritable staining so that that means that if you put some color on and then you're working in another area and then you decide you want to fade that bit out a bit more put some more alcohol on and it will blend again so this is a great surface to work on but so many other things you can also do. You can do ceramic tiles, fabulous area, make drink coasters and things like that. So we will be doing this in a later video. You can also work on, now let me just get something back into shot, uh, tins, uh, metal surfaces. Now this is one where I've actually, the original color there was probably done 15 or so years ago. Uh, it's been updated a little bit since then. It's never had any sealer or anything on. It gets carried around in my craft bag. The inks survive pretty well. But if you do want to preserve them, using something like a the Krylon uh, Kmar varnish is the way that you seal your work. If you're looking at selling works of art, it's good to use an ultraviolet spray as well. And the other thing you can also do is use a resin over your work to actually give it, and that's what I'll do when I'm doing the drink coasters, to actually give it a really resistant surface and to protect it. Okay, so tins. Now the other thing is wood. You can use it on wood. Now that's been used on just a bit of varnished wood. Matthew, I think Matthew's going in for a close up. Yep, so I'm just gonna hold there for a moment. How cool is that? So that's just my that's my blend my inking tool that we're going to be using but I've played around with the wooden handle um, you can also if your wood it hasn't been uh, had a finish put to it like if it's just raw you might want to put a coat of paint on it and the same with a canvas a raw canvas put a coat of a like a satin household paint on before you use it so your canvases is another surface you can use either the canvas boards or large canvases uh, if they've already been pre gessoed you're probably okay just to go straight ahead with your inks but just check whether you do need to give it a bit of a paint ones that i've done i've given them a bit of a paint just to be sure okay so that's our basic surfaces now the tools that we can use number one is our pouncing type tools so this is the a rectangular one which is good for covering bigger areas or the circular one that gives you a bit more control and these are like the blending tools where you put a foam pad on but when you're working with alcohol inks you actually use a felt pad not a foam one and that just sticks to the velcro on the bottom you can just buy felt and cut your own to pop them on which is what i've done here for the rectangular one 
I find with the circle one, you can cut your own felts for that, but I actually just buy them, the Ranger ones, that are already pre-die cut for me, because I can't be bothered cutting felt into little circles. So it's, yes, you can just buy felt and do it yourself. This is just a convenience product that it's there, done already for you. Okay, so that can, we can use those to apply. You can just drop the inks directly onto the paper and then move them around with an air source, either blowing with a straw or a blower or a hairdryer. Again, in a later video, we're gonna go into some of those techniques with moving the inks around. Today, we're just going to use the basic blending tools and do some pouncing just to get you started. Okay, so I think let's get going and make some, make some mess. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a little bit of gloss card here. As I said, that's one of my favorites to work with, is the gloss card. And I've got some colors out ready. And because I'm using a big area, I'm going to go with the rectangular block. And all I'm going to do is just put some blobs of color onto the felt. So we're starting off with some bright yellow. I'm then going to add in some tangerine. You can do one color at a time if you like, or you can do multiple colors at once. I usually like the mess of doing multiple colors at once. And I'm gonna use a, just a few daubs of sangria, which is a darker burgundy. Now I'm going to show you this one without using any of the metallics, and then we're going to come in and use metallics on the next one, just so you can see the difference. Now this is where we do need our Claro extender. If we just did that straight onto our page, we would just get dots which could be effective as well, but they're just gonna be dots that dry straight away. I don't want it to dry straight away. I wanna get a marbled effect. So I'm gonna just drop some drops of extender on there. You can see it's already causing those inks to mush out a bit. And then we basically just pounce. And you just keep going until you've got the coverage that you want. If I was thinking I would like a little bit more of the burgundy, I can add a bit more to my pad and add that in. If I want a little bit finer patterns, I might go over it a little bit more. So you can see we're creating different patterns and lines through there. I think I am gonna add some more burgundy. I'm just adding a few more drops and I'll add a little bit more of the Clearo extender as well. Okay. See how the inks are just moving themselves, but we can move them more. So let's get our isopropyl alcohol, which when you start off with the cleanup solution, that's what it is, so you can use it directly from that bottle. I've actually popped mine into a finer nozzled bottle. Now we can just drop some drops on and watch it move. Now the difference between the extender and using just straight isopropyl alcohol, the extender will move the color without taking away any of the color. So if we pop a drop of that on, The color is going to move, but and it's going to blend together. So it helps blend the colors. If we drop the alcohol on, it tends to lift and lighten the colors. So we should get a bit of a different look here. Now when we're working with, usually I use the, the Claro either on the page first or on the pad. And then when I start to do more effects, that's when I'll come in with the alcohol. But you can see that's lighter and you can see more patches of the colors, whereas this is more of a blended look. So that's the difference that you get with the two of them. So we can just add some drops just directly from that bottle and get some different sizes around. But these ones are going to spread out a fair bit. We can also use other tools for putting on drops of ink to create different effects. Now, some of those, I've just put some isopropyl alcohol into a little jar, and I'm going to use a cotton bud. So let's pop that in. And you've sometimes got to wait a moment to see how big it's going to go 
before you add your next one. And don't do two next to each other unless you want them to blend in together. See how that's going to push into that one a bit. But if I did another one here, we're going to get a blobby shape, whereas here we've got a definite circle. So depending on how much I'm pushing it onto the page and how much solution is getting onto the page is how much we're going to get that moving out. Now another tool that you can use is just a, a ball ended tool. So something that you would use for shaping and embossing flowers or for pomegranate crafts. So again, dip that into the alcohol. And now we're starting to get some smaller dots. Again, I'm not gonna do the dots right next to each other. I'll come back and add some more once that one's dried. Oh, that's a beautiful close-up there, Matthew. That's great. Just adding in some really light touches so I get some small ones. I have to warn you, this is a very addictive craft. You can find yourself spending ages just going, oh, I could just do a little bit more there and a bit more here. Playing. Now the other thing that we could use is a brush and I would have a separate brush that you use for alcohol inks. I normally actually don't use very expensive ones for my alcohol inks. Um, but use a brush and then keep these separate because your alcohol inks aren't going to, you wouldn't use this with um, water base, water colouring type mediums. So. Uh, and also the alcohol with some brushes. Some brushes stand up much better to alcohol than others and Ranger actually has a brush set that they've tested so that they will cope with having the alcohol used on them. You don't want to use it in your normal, like your aqua wash brushes, because it can just dissolve the plastics. And so just be a little bit wary that the alcohol may damage some of your, um, your tools. So just be a bit careful. So this is just a fairly cheap brush and I'm just going to put a bit of alcohol on it and then I'm going to just drag some lines with it. I'm just sort of rolling it and changing the pressure and you'll see that we start to get this sort of ripple through it. If it stops having an effect you need to put some more alcohol on. But give it a moment, Don't you often think, oh, there's nothing happening, and then just have a look, and you'll see it is coming through. Okay, so there's various ways that we can move that ink around on our piece of work. And of course, if you don't like what's happening, you can use alcohol to redo it. Uh, particularly if you're working on something like a tile or the masterpiece board or even sometimes your canvases, you can just put some alcohol on some paper towel and just wipe off areas that you don't like. It can be a very forgiving art. I'm looking at this and thinking mm, some of those are a little bit big so I'm just going to put a bit of Claro on just to refresh the colours I've got there and we're just going to add a little bit more pouncing over the top. Still keeping some of the shape there but just breaking it up a bit. And I'm much happier with that now. Yeah, you know, so just sometimes adding just a touch of something changes it. It's some, it's a, I think, I'm often joking when I'm doing watercoloring and stuff that I never quite know when to stop. This is worse. <laughs> it's really hard to know when to go, okay, it's done. But to me, that one is done. Okay, let's play with some other colors and show you with some of the um, alcohol, with the uh, metallics. So I'm just gonna give my work area a bit of a spray and clean it off. So that was just a spray with some isopropyl. This is a good one too if you've got um, any 
the gel hand sanitizer around can be good because you're not then spraying it and it's because it's a gel um, it doesn't dry so quickly on your mat and you actually get a bit longer time to clean it okay let's now oh I just want to cover one more thing while we're playing around with this orange one is the other thing that you can do is actually pop your alcohol inks onto the Ranger Tim Holtz alcohol ink palette and then you can actually pick up colors so these have been put on there and then they just dry and then we can actually just reactivate them with a bit of alcohol and we can add some colors other colors in there I'm just hoping it's going to show up because I've actually got so much color on there already it's picking up some of it Now I'm just doing dots, but we could actually paint designs, but not on such a vivid background. But yeah, so by having it in a palette, you can actually then with a brush, have a little bit more control over your colors. <laughs> it's always a problem with a, a um, starting out with something like this is knowing how much information to give people. Cause you just start going, oh, but we could do this and we could do this. And, and have I forgotten to talk about this? Okay, this piece shows you some of the different metallic colours already put onto a panel. So I'd already put some colours on the backing and then I've done the copper and then we've got the gold, silver and the brass and this is the white. Now the white I've done it mixed here with the alcohol and it tended to stay a little bit blobby. Here I mixed it with the Clairo extender which the white as I said is a very opaque one and it moves differently to the other metallics. So here I use it with the Claro instead and actually got a little bit more blending and movement with it. Uh, it's quite an exciting one to work with, but it is very thick. So it takes a little bit of practice. The copper and the silver, I find, have a little bit of floatability, but they do tend to spread a little bit more um, with the color, uh, when, when you mix them with your colors. Whereas the brass and the gold, you can get them to mix, but you can also get them to really float on top of the colors and you get some great ripples and lines. I'll just see if I've got the one I did on the masterpiece board and you can see that again. So this is done with copper, has done some of the, the softer background metallic, and then I've used gold to get those beautiful lines of gold through there. Uh, if I tip it up that way, there we go. That's got it really showing. So the gold and the brass, it's they just float on top of the alcohol and that's how you can get these beautiful lines through it. The one that I did on my blending tool, that was done with brass and the sangria color. So the sangria gives a lovely burgundy, but the brass you can see is just sort of floated on top of the color. All right, so that's we're gonna use some metallics in here and we're gonna switch our colors to some blues and purples and I'll pick out my gold. I'll give it a shake now but I will have to shake it again just before I work with it. Okay so we're going to start off the same, pouncing our colours on with our little pad. Let's add a drop of purple. I do find with the alcohol inks and you will find this especially when we start working with the inks directly on the card that you're actually the more confident you are with them, the less likely you are to get them to spill and splash. If I go, oh, I don't know about this colour, I'll, I might get a splash of several blobs. If I just put it on, I'll get it where I want it. So sometimes you've got to just take a deep breath and just get in there and put it in. So I'm just giving the bottle a little squeeze. It's usually when you've got a piece that you really want to be careful with that you tip them up and it just splashes over the whole thing on you. But then it's alcohol inks, it'll move, you can make it into art. Let's pop a bit of Claro on there and we're going to start pouncing. I want full coverage of this piece of card. Let that move a little bit. I'm just going to keep pouncing over there. I'm going to pop a bit more Claro on and get a little bit more movement happening. Oh, that's a bit nice. 
Now let's pop our gold on. Now we could have put our gold on at the same time as the colours. That's really just, it's worth experimenting with both to see what you'd prefer, but it's really just a, a preference thing. So I'm just gonna pop a couple of spots of gold on. And a bit more Claro. Make sure it's gonna move for me. Going back over those bits just to break them up a bit, spread it out. I don't know how much that's showing. If I hold it up, you can start to see where that gold is through there. Just the metallics are beautiful to use. Now let's just add a couple more drops of Clairo just on there just to get a little bit of movement happening, see if we like it. No, too much. Stomp over it again. Now that I'm starting to like. That's really cool enough gold over the whole lot yep that is coming up really nice now with the same colors where's my little tin before I get these now you don't wash these pads once you finish using them that's it you just discard them um, you can usually reuse them if you're doing that with the same colors like particularly on the same day with the same colors but once you've got it all messy and mucky and you're finished with it they just get thrown out that's why we have a, a supply of them okay let's pop a little bit of gold in there and i'm going to use the same pouncing a little bit of our claro on the surface of my tin edge of it a little bit. And apart from the fact that I've got a big blob of gold right in the middle. So I'm going to actually put a little bit of Clairo over the top of that and get it to move and then give it another bit of a pounce. So there we go, surface of the tin. Have we got that in the light nicely? There we go. And again you can see that beautiful gold showing through this poor little tin, every time I need to demonstrate on metal, it's, um, it's this little tin. <laughs> okay, so now we're just gonna clean up here a little bit and then I'm going to show you, we're gonna mount this one up and you can see how it looks once you start to actually do something with it. So let's grab our paper towel. Give ourselves a little bit of a clean. And I'm, backgrounds like this work beautiful with your die cuts but you can also stamp over it. But today we're going to do this one just with a die cut. I'm just gonna slip my gloves off now. And grab the paper and the die cut that I've got ready. So we're gonna mount this up here. And I'm not gonna stop because I think we've been talking for a bit long here. So I'm not gonna stop and actually stick all the layers together. I'll stick them together to show you in a finished photo. But I'm just going to put the die cut over the top so we can see it. And of course I'm getting myself all knotted up here. I haven't even stopped to check whether my background's dried enough for this yet. We're just going ahead and doing it. So I might need to come back and check that in a minute. Anyway, so that's the idea of how you can use those backgrounds. And I'm just going to grab another sample in that I did playing around with dark cardstock and a similar background using the same colours actually but this time I had more of the blue and less of the purple and with my die cut I've actually laid it up with a bit of a, a white die cut underneath so I've done a white layer and then the black layer just so that the black stood out particularly from the dark card here 
So just showing you same colors, different effects depending on the different amounts of color and how you're different, what you use cardstock wise with it. We could certainly have used a purple card in there would look fantastic as well. Like a little white border around this and then lay it onto a deep purple. Don't forget also, you can make a background card with the same alcohol ink. So we could make a background that goes with our panel there on our gloss card, something like that. So you can actually make a background in the matching tones. Okay, so hopefully that's given you some ideas for getting started. We're going to continue and do a series of these DVDs. Don't forget, have a look on our YouTube channel at some of our other DVDs that we've done for eclectic images. And we'll hopefully see you for our next one. Okay.